Uh, I, nothing's working. I, I guess we're live. Harvey, listen, I've got an idea for a show. You're going to love this. It's like radio. But, you know, with pictures. And, and, and we do it on a live stream. We talk like gaming and technology and stuff. But we can talk about whatever we want to. I mean, it's our show. That's the point, Harvey. It's our show and we can do what we want to. Uh, but it's got like comedy and sketches and stuff and, and bits. You know, like Saturday Night Live. Do you, do you know Saturday Night Live? Do you guys have Saturday Night Live in the UK? Oh, God, the glory days of SNL, right? I mean, Belushi out of his mind on blow. No Coke, Pepsi. You ever see that one? I'll send you a YouTube link. But our show's not like that. I mean, kind of, but not really. Like, uh, more, more cool there, but not political. I mean, it could be if you want it to be. We can do whatever you want, Harvey. I'm, I'm completely open to things. But I really think that you and I should just, you know, we should work together. This could be great. People are going to love this. Hello, I am the Ronan Paul, and there we go. Nothing is working today. Everything is broken. <clears throat> it's a very technologically challenging day today. Yes. Uh, but we are pressing on regardless, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the show. <sighs> welcome. Everything, everything. Nothing's working today. The bot wasn't working when we got here. Nobot wasn't online. Thank you, Noah Croft, for rushing in and getting him up and working. Apparently, we're not broadcasting to YouTube right now. Uh, for reasons that seem to exist on YouTube's side. Um, I, I can't press any of the buttons correctly on this thing. Look, I'm trying to go to the wide. That didn't happen. It may be exaggerated. Oh, is even that not working? No, no, that's working. It's, it's oh, okay. wires crossed <laughs> in my brain. Because um, there's a lot of wires around here when you've got a VR headset. Oh, segue. Oh, um, oh we, hard segue. Hard yeah. pitch. Straight into the top there. You got a VR uh, headset, my God, the cables, especially from Gen 1, you know what I'm talking about? <laughs> well, you know what you're talking about. <laughs> oh. <laughs> You've been doing a lot of evil laughing lately. I have been working on it, um, as today's segments might reveal. Um, but we'll get to those when the time is ready. How are you doing right now? You, the person watching us in this very real studio that we have created. Are you enjoying it? Are you enjoying just Harv and Porn generally, the show so far? Do you mean um, uh, Noah Kra and Mikhail1969? Hi, Mike. Uh, Hologram1, Blackie704, Matty Hayes. Do you, you mean any of these people? Or Blackie? No. I saw you here. No, no? None of, no, none of them. Oh, yeah, the other people, no. though. What do you think? How, how are we doing? <laughs> <laughs> Noah Gra, glad to hear you're good. Prosecutor Walton, glad to hear you're good. Hologram, glad to hear that you're wondering how many shirt changes there will be today. Plenty. Maybe. Probably not. I don't know. I'm quite liking the, uh... Oh, oh, porn. This is an invasion of today. personal space, porn! <laughs> God damn it! <laughs> we have a rift between us for a reason. And speaking mm. of rifts... Oh, hard segue! In fact, I'd uh, call that a harv segue. 
Oh, hard, hard oh. segue with the pun to follow it up. Oh. Mm. Man. Today's a good day for puns, just not for technology. No, everything And with that, broken. with that, coming up in the show, we've got a couple of segments for you today. A skit, a bit more might. Uh, we have a poll for you, a straw poll that we'll get to eventually. Oh. But for now, I mean, if it's okay with you, Porn, we may as well just launch straight into the topic. Actually, it's not okay with me, having said that. How has your week been? Actually, quite interesting. Uh, today, I, I put a video up. I mean, I recorded it yesterday, but I got a, uh, a new microphone in for the Harvin Pawn thing. Um, and I realized I needed to test it yesterday, so I'm just down in the basement. Pop open the microphone. It's $23 microphone from Amazon. I, I had no expectations of it being any good at all. Um, but popped it open and I went, well, I got to test it anyway. Might as well record the testing of it. And boom, came out with a totally clickbaity video that's going to get all these views from Amazon. People are going to come, they're going to watch it and be like, what's, the, what's it sound like? Because I always want to know what it sounds like whenever I go looking for mm. a, a new microphone. I always go looking on YouTube for, so I know what I'm doing. They're going to find that video. They're going to watch it and then they're going to click on my Amazon referral link and then I get 10% of the commission. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, it, uh, it's, it's fun to have a little project like that that pops up and it's just spontaneous and you just friggin' do it and 20 minutes you got the video and then you go upstairs and you edit it for 17 hours because you're just a perfectionist. You never know when you're done. It's just, it's a so good time. It's a good time. If you're not keeping it exclusive for that video so that the Amazon referral link can just get blasted, uh, how did it sound? I'm interested to know. It was an XLR mic, right? Uh, yeah, it's an XLR, like, yeah. boom-style shotgun, really skinny, you know, uh, condenser mic. And it sounds fine, especially for $23, it sounds fine. Yeah. Uh, I was actually surprised in the video because I had heard this uh, microphone from other reviewers in its tele mode, which I presume it means telescopic mode, so the long distance kind of thing. Uh, oh, and it had yeah. sounded pretty crap in that mode. So before I'd heard it while I'm testing it there, I'm like, I don't expect this to sound good, but this is what it sounds like. And uh, it actually looks like that's going to be pretty useful for, you know, getting a, a strong sort of tunnel of audio and keeping the sound com coming in from left to right, hmm. as well as uh, getting a nice compressed uh, audio signal where it's really beefing up those vocals that it's pointed at. Uh, yeah, so, I've but, been told, or not even specifically I've been told, but I've heard rumors that even cheap XLR microphones are basically better than USB mics. Uh, I could believe it if, like, I don't know. I, you got a pretty nice sounding USB mic right there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, this one, when I bought it, was like 80 pounds though i would think it's 60 now for a blue snowball so what 50 dollars for for it so yeah and actually this 23 dollar yeah. mic um at least with a little bit of eqing which is what i always plan to do could be used in place of this microphone like i actually did think about maybe if that one doesn't work so good in the basement i'll bring the you know cheapy one up here and then take this one down there and um, it sounds good, and with uh, just a slight EQ, even without an EQ, if you're right within a foot of it, it's got a beefy sound to it. Uh, yeah. Which I know audio engineering is what you all tuned in for, but I, I you know, <laughs> that, little things like that excite. Well, hey, this is the thing: is that I, I very nearly went into what we previously had planned, uh, what we previously discussed for the format of this show, which was like, let's jump right in with the main discussion topic, and uh, fuck you, we're gonna just talk about whatever it is. <laughs> but then I remembered that what we're doing now for Harvard Porn is editing down the main discussion topic and releasing just that on YouTube. And what that means is that we don't have to worry about people's engagement on YouTube with those notoriously fickle uh, one click on, one click off within 15 second viewers sliding away too quickly. We can take our time now, because when we put it on YouTube, we'll just go straight to the good stuff. And then we can keep all of this lovely, entertaining, wholesome, personal, real talk. A little bit exclusive to try and uh, get a little bit of uh, 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 finger rubbing. 
going on. A little bit of finger rubbing. Oh! I, uh, I caught a cat. I caught a you kitty. You caught it? <laughs> ah! Ah! Well, that is going to be used for the uh, thumbnail. Could someone record the timestamp right now, <laughs> just so when I'm going back next week, I can. It was about uh, ten minutes that. and twenty seconds into. It. <laughs> okay, good. Ten minutes, twenty seconds. All right. Yes. Uh, I, we, I'm going to go for this right now, actually, you know. Uh, speaking of Patreon stuff, not to start the stream with shilling, but um, Shillings. this isn't a call for you to support us right now before you get all, uh, all high and mighty on us. We just want to know if you were theoretically to support us yeah, on really. Patreon. As a hypothetical then, situation. Yeah, exactly. What would appeal to you most? And if I can find the goddamn straw poll, I'll be able to ask you. Hang on, I know where Houston, I'm can you bleep that in post? You just <laughs> leave me out of it, okay? Okay, I guess it doesn't really work for us. <clears throat> no, apparently not. Uh, here we go, it's in the Twitch chat. I think Noah Crow, Noah Crow got there before I did. Thanks, Noah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, so just let us know. I've listed a few ideas for the kinds of things, because we put a lot of work into this show. I think we're on, what, episode index four, which is technically stream six now. <laughs> um, you made it so freaking complicated for me to keep that straight in my head. Let's start on uh, negative right. one. Hey, hey, random aim with a 500 bit cheer. Thank you. Can't wow. do Patreon, awesome but stuff. hope this is fine. That is fine, random aim. We will take your bits. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> More oh than God. fine. We appreciate that very much. Thank you. In fact, we should do a live... Well, I just want to do a video at some point talking about, like, how uh, internet entertainers, YouTubers, and, and Twitch streamers uh, get paid and how you support them and, like, just let people know, like, what literally are the best ways to support, you know, the people yeah. who you want to if they've given you several options. Because in this day and age, like, it's almost requisite that you give people several options you know there's patreon there's paypal uh we don't do it but there's the youtube super cheers and then there's twitch this and you just want to you know most i guess probably most streamers just want to do it everywhere all at once and um if you do there are certain things that are far better use of your money if you're trying to you know actually support the person than others and i, I want to do a video at some point in the future you know talking about um what the percentages <laughs> are yeah, you should, because I, I wasn't aware of this completely, and yet I am technically a content creator. So, Well, I'm very much a content <laughs> creator. Technically a YouTuber, Twitch streamer, just have had time off. I've, I've come out of retirement, basically. You're a technical, um, but yeah, before we content creator. <laughs> yeah. Before we lunch right in to Ooh, the main lunch, discussion I'm topic, hungry. Um, that poll has a few ideas that Porn and I came up with for... Things which we could offer to try and incentivize people to support us through Patreon. Um, but if there are things that you think would be reasonable for us to do, maybe not quite nudes, hologram. I mean, if we get desperate enough. But not for now. Yeah, it's, it, <laughs> it uh, if you have any ideas for things that you think are just lying in wait that we could do, then, then let us know that you'd be mm. interested in. I would happily Patreon once uh, I get a part-time job. Oh, thank you, Maddie Hayes. I thought I was looking for a joke there. I was like, I would happily Patreon if just, you know, like monthly dick pic or something, you know, just like. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, once you've seen them, though, once, do you really need it next month or so? Like, has much changed? I mean, other than that weird shaped mole that just keeps getting bigger. But other than that, everybody's got one of those, don't they? Yeah. Uh Mickey, M Mikhail, Mikhail, I guess, Mikhail? wants an option for you to uh, go cook dinner for them, and I'll narrate the evening. I, I like the idea of that. that. As a, uh, Born as like walked a... into Mikhail's kitchen. <laughs> he sat down at the table, having pulled out a chopping board, and slowly caressed the vegetables with his knife. <laughs> Maintaining eye contact the entire time. Liberally <laughs> applied the sauce to the sausage in a slow and delicate fashion. Ah! <clears throat> mm. uh, 
So does Patreon mean you guys are a private limited to prosecutor? Well, well, don't tell anybody because like it's it's we would have had to incorporate as like an international business or something. So don't tell anybody. But um, all of our money is in the Bermuda Triangle and we can't get it out anymore. No, it's uh, we're just operating in whatever slipshod, hackneyed, duct tape bodged way that we can possibly do. And then if things are successful enough to start reporting to the governments that we're making, <laughs> they're hearing no, about it. They just don't know on, in what wait, form wait. we are. Yeah, I want to I wanna point out we're not avoiding paying tax. Yeah. We're still reporting the income. You just can put up to $20,000 in a PayPal income. account yeah. and they won't, they won't know anything about it in America. That's... <laughs> <laughs> um, no, what we've actually done is that we've got married. Uh, sorry that we didn't record or vlog the wedding. Um, but now that I have the green card, I'm going to move to America and we're going to just cohabit. And, um, and then it's weird the revenue is like joint revenue anyway. So That would be yeah. so much better, too. Like, we should yeah. consider that as an option because it's, it's shocking, like, how the um, revenues get uh, sort of slashed when you're just in Europe. If you're, you know, it's, uh, or at least there's, there's greater costs for like getting your money out and stuff. Um, I think between Twitch and at, at least Twitch, I think Patreon might have solved this, but I believe Twitch's payouts, um, there's a certain percentage that's going to come with it each time you do a payout because, you know, there's a service that's transferring money between bank accounts, uh, which you would think would be a couple of cents, but it, it can include a percentage. And I believe because Twitch is a, and it's not because it's Amazon and they're Friggin' global. <laughs> but I believe because Twitch is a, a US-based company, they charge, it doesn't make any sense, but they charge like a percent that if it's a large amount, that percent is going to be a large amount. And in America, it's limited to like a buck fifty, uh, what they'll take. And I think you'd have to make a lot of money for them to even take the full buck fifty. I don't know. But uh, I, I should do a video about that at some point in future and just talk about the ways that middlemen are sucking us all dry. <laughs> and with that out of the way, um, <laughs> uh, my week has been pretty good. Insanity is what we're living in. Um, I had an exceptionally good day at work today. So I work as a software developer, although not really a software developer. I work more as a data scientist at my job. And I've been working on an algorithm for I just love doing the, the real idea, time. The statement, you science the data. I'm a data scientist. I science the data. I science yes. the data. The verb to science. That's, that's <laughs> what I do to the data that we get. Uh, yeah, I've got these motion sensors, which are, you wear them during the night, and they supposedly pick up your chest oscillation, and then I've got some algorithms which uh, get your respiration rate from it. And it wasn't working very well, and then it was working okay, and now it's working really well. Like it's oh, cool. more accurate than uh, like any other literature that I've found for kind of comparable solutions mm. um, for this very limited data set. So it's not very statistically valid yet. I need to validate it, but that's kind of the next step. But yeah, it's, um, it's going well. That's so satisfying when you get to that point in code where it's like you had an idea, you put something together. Why isn't that working? All right, well, maybe if I had this in and then it finally like cracks and it's like, boom, I got it. Mm. If the data changes, is... something might fall apart. But based on this data set, I managed to actually like get the result I was hoping I could get. Well, that's the thing as well as um, the breakthroughs haven't been any like crazy science. It's mostly been science. Oh, this is what's making it go badly. Like, I had one of my sensors which was just faulty. So I just threw out that data and then, hey, that was like three times as good. And it's just <laughs> finding those little bits that are snagging it from being as good as it can be. Um, and yeah, yeah, I've, I've just managed to get pretty well now. So Maybe working Things really well, Harv, up. says Blackie, but does it have machine learning and blockchain? Yeah, is it uh, well? How does Bitcoin it has involve one of itself? those things, or will have one of those things? Hey. Um, so when does yes, the blockchain? Yes, I'm making half coin. No, <laughs> so. no uh, join the hodl this... game, the Harv hodl gang. <laughs> yeah, uh, this thing is going to be correlated with 
some audio analysis, which is using uh, a machine learning classifier. So, but then in the future, yeah, more stuff, uh, plenty of interesting ML things coming up. And I kind of need to talk to my bosses about it, but I'm thinking of making some videos about all this stuff as well, because um, it's interesting stuff and I'd like to share it more with you guys. So, hmm. yeah. Got to make sure and sign those NDAs, but yeah. <laughs> Well, that's the thing is that my contract currently, I think, prohibits me from uh, giving away Doing any live streams property. with the Ronin Pawn. That's a usual thing in the contract. <laughs> that is, that's going to be appended very soon, I think. Uh, <laughs> so, what was, uh, what was that episode? Of... The third or fourth episode you guys did? Oh, it was about weed. Employer. <laughs> oh, yeah. Hey, my contract doesn't say anything that I'm not allowed to talk about weed. So. <laughs> yeah. YouTube doesn't um, say it, but they won't let you monetize it, the bastards. Yeah, YouTube really doesn't like our streams. Even even the ones which, like the Daryl episode that was called "Kill the Witch," I think it picked up on "kill" and was like, "Whoa, that's not family friendly." <laughs> Come <Jeez>. on. <laughs> well, isn't this one including the term like "Did Generation Two kill VR?" Or did we change that? That was oh, one no, of the questions. We're not calling anyway. it that one now. It's just, mm -hmm. is it dead? But hey, I mean, dead isn't safe for kids yeah. of all ages. So right, and yeah. it's not even about kids. Yeah. It's about advertising. They don't care about kids. They don't mind like corrupting the youth of the world. They're, they're concerned about whether or not the advertisers will put their money in. And it's ridiculous because the Born. same advertisers Born. are on. Yeah. Born. <laughs> what? This isn't the topic of today's show. Oh. <laughs> as much as we could go into a half an hour rant about advertising again. Well, let's, uh, let's not. <laughs> and the dashboard really, it's actually gotten better, the YouTube dashboard. It's actually it's still really crap, though. It's so usable at this yeah. point. Certain yeah. things. You just figure out what you can use it for. <laughs> so, so, virtual reality. Virtual reality. That's it. We're virtual finally going to start talking about it right now. Hey, I'm running low on coffee here. Can we roll a segment? Shit. Oh, no. Houston, <laughs> we were about to start the video. Fine. All right, let's roll a segment. Okay. Uh, if you'll recall, Harv and I have been playing a little bit of the Minecraft is too easy. It's the, uh, one of the hardest versions uh, of Minecraft that no. you can play. Yes, no, it's too easy. We've seen, I, I saw the video you linked me to, but I would st almost argue that doesn't look like a game. It doesn't look like it's been balanced and fairly like thought through and is this, you know, carefully crafted so that you can move through what is it, R E? R L craft? Was that I, what it is? Yeah, so apparently I really haven't even watched the video, but there's another heavily modded version of Minecraft called R L craft or something. And um, And it looks like it's yeah, got a it whole bunch of really cool crazy. stuff going on, different, you yeah. know, entities and animals and different rules for the world, somewhat similar to Might. I think it might have borrowed some of the concepts from Might. But, uh, you know, that video that you linked me to was just a guy, like, spawning in, and something kills him, and then he spawns somewhere else, and something kills him, and it's like, that is not yeah. gameplay at this point. You it's know? not, like, there's not, like, the tactical challenge that Might has, it's just, hey, there's a lot of creatures which can just kill you really easily. <laughs> yeah, you know? yeah, it doesn't look and like it's that, been truly balanced yet. On the other hand, Might has. <laughs> so, please enjoy. What Never was the developer's there. name again? Avernite. Avernite. Jeez, I say that with such hostility, too. It's like, Avernite. Like I'm spitting something. Slime in the back of your throat. Avernite. <laughs> three. Three. Two. One. Three. Go. Two. Oh, no. We're, okay, we're back. Oh, we're back on the... Right. Um, we're so, here. it's definitely not day, obviously. Um, where's the hole? Over here. Yeah. I also notice that we're on uh, negative one levels now. Yes, the levels do indeed go in the negative direction. Hmm. Shall I take Ooh. some carrots and be greedy? You do whatever you feel is. <laughs> yes, you should do that. You should. Do that. I may have already stolen the two bowls that were in there. Yeah. In fact, there's your bowl. Oh, we will each wow. have a bowl. This is good. Three yellow flowers in a bowl makes a salad, and that's going to be a oh. huge oh, benefit to us. I don't know if our bowls of soup spilled when we died, because it they do things like that in might. You know, like, I was going to ask you... that by throwing me that bowl of soup, are you sure you weren't going to like spill it just by throwing it? In fact, if you die like underwater and you're carrying 
milled flour, that's gone. That's it's amazing the level of detail he uh yeah. he went to. So it was mountain we went straight, mountain right? Jungles. Mountain jungles. Yeah. Alright, back into the maelstrom. Probably can't see each other I can't again. Open the door. Right? It's because oh, I was in front yeah, of you and we're you invisible to one another. Oh great. Yeah. Hmm. <clears throat> well, I guess I'll go restart that server again. <laughs> Food here. I'm taking one of the pumpkin soups. I don't give a sh I don't, I don't, I'll it's not even that valuable. I'll take a pumpkin pie. Oh my god, if you're taking pie, I'm taking pie. I'll leave the soup behind. The pie is way more useful to oh, it. Oh, is it? Okay. okay. Um, hey, I took it in ignorance. I have no idea of the relative worth of these things. I'm <laughs> That's why I feel fine about doing it, too. Uh... <laughs> Where Grab was yellow flowers. Wasn't that over here? Um, it's yeah, it's across from the jungle, or from the um, yeah, from the jungle. But bear in mind that it will contain not only our items but also an angry zombie. Yeah. They do not despawn after they kill you in this. Version. I see. Um, I see him. I think it's a baby. Oh no, it's maybe it's just two blocks down. There's two of them as well. Where? There's where? the home. Oh yeah. I'm using uh Oh Zed. yeah, no, I can see him now. Okay, yeah, there's two yeah. wow. They've multiplied. Cool. No, there was two when we when they killed us, I think. Oh really? Bastards. Yeah. Maybe that's how they burst through the woods so easily, I guess. Uh Hi guys. How you doing? Is it worth even hitting them with our fists? Does that do anything? No. It will hurt your fist is what it will do. <laughs> oh, but the sun I has come how... out. Yay. Wait, are they gonna burn or are they in shade? They're in shape. Yeah. But if we destroy this wood... Oh, no, we can't mine wood, right? Yes, you can, actually. You can punch it because it's been... But be ready to run. Yeah. Man. Like, as soon as you get it out, they will two-shot you to death. Maybe even one-shot you to well, death. Well, I'll tell you what. I'm going to have them help me break it, and I'll just run. I know where I'm going. Risky operation here, but uh, they should yeah, burn. Yeah, watch out for the water right behind you. You turn yeah. left and run. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've already planned it out, don't worry. Oh my god, I'm so scared. Oh my god, I'm so scared. Ah, run! <laughs> Hello, okay, we're good. fellas! We're good. Yep, just gotta avoid them now. In fact, if I could get back in there and actually take the stick, we could get some XP by killing them with, like, the last blow after they mostly burned. The one chasing you fell in the water which put out his fire. <laughs> yeah, go for the stick. Go for it. Oh, he killed no! me. Oh, no, Harvey! Oh, oh no! You his, bastards! Uh... You'll pay for this! <laughs> his, um, his range was way, way further than I thought it was. Oh, yeah? <laughs> Ooh, yeah. we got a copper nugget. At some point, you dug a copper nugget. Oh, really? Because I didn't, I don't think. Oh, you maybe it was just so dark nugget. I didn't even... All right. Wow. Uh... All right, well, I've come back immediately. Uh... Okay, I've already picked up your stuff, but I got a lot of stuff to throw at you, so... Um, so, just checking to see right, so you have a hatchet. Bananas. No. We need, no, we need we some are more gravel still. One, yeah, one thing of gravel away from it. So, what we could really focus right. on today is... I mean, we need the food to stay alive. Um, yeah. But the gravel. Do you want to do gravel hunting and I'll do food hunting? Yeah. I mean, was there even more... I'll go back to where we were and just check that there, there oh, might wait, have been Oh wait, I didn't one. give you any of the flowers. Oh, that's alright, I've got one. Hey, there is more gravel there. Yeah, you work the gravel and I will look for food and I'll try and find us some animals to slaughter. Uh, Priority-wise, in terms of animals, uh, cows are best, even though they take the longest to kill, they tend to give the most and, and they're the most worthwhile of eating even if you can't cook their meat. Sure. Then, I feel like... Mm, sheep... Because sheep are going to give us wool, and soon enough we'll have wood, and we'll need to be able to make a bed. So killing the sheep, mm. even though you know you're just going to get the one piece of meat off of it, it's better. And the only reason that's better than a pig is because a pig runs like a son of a bitch. And in <laughs> Might, he has given all of the mobs, like, uh, all of the friendly, you know, animal mobs, better AI. So they juke you. Mm. They juke you, and they, they find Oh, they'll run them much harder. Yeah. yeah. The 
The cows are pretty easy to take down, but the pigs have been the death of me so many times. I go chase them off into a forest or something, and then I finally catch up to them, and I have no idea which direction I came from or where all the <laughs> things I left were. Yeah, see? Oh, this pig, there's this cow that I'm killing right now for the both of us. I found one. Speaking uh, of a direction, where, the, where are you? Oh, um, stay generally in that area, and I'll come back. Because I have flint. Oh, you got it? All right. I, I got, got some it. leather, and I got three pieces of steak. So we're doing Fantastic. great. Oh, my God, there's a little kitty. There's a little kitty. Kill it. Ah. Kill the kitty. Use the fur. <laughs> Eat the meat. I don't know if that's a thing, Harvey, but... Kill it, Dad. It's interesting that you go straight to kill the kitty. Uh... No, I'm being purely survivalist. I mean, I've died twice. Like, you wouldn't understand you've only died once. <laughs> when you get down to my level... You hit rock bottom. So, I want you to make it, because it's a ma it's a ma magical experience. This is like a coming-of-age tale. Oh, shoot. We need one more stick. Oh. Uh. Yeah, don't we? I think we need one more stick. Well, I'm making the flint now. I like yeah, that crafting the also together. takes time now. That's cool. There is a way, a specific way, to take down a tree in might that I always try and convey. Uh... uh. Which is, it's just you got to strip all of the leaves from, from the wood, you know, so that the rest right. of the tree will biodegrade on its own. But because it's like really important not to waste your time and everything takes so long to like punch through, it's sort of this dig in from the sides and then strip it from the interior kind of thing. I'm guessing you uh, probably want to expose clear. the most surface area. So what, do like corners first? No, no corners. It's just got to be wherever it shares, wherever a leaf block shares a face with the wood of the core of the tree, uh, that's oh, what you right. want to break off. And only those, and then all of the other uh, leaf blocks will just start to fall apart. Oh, on their yeah, own. of course, because it's, it's the wood that you want to biodegrade, is it? Or is it the leaves? It's the leaves that'll biodegrade, but they get their oh, structural so you integrity the from right. the wood. Yep. Right. Exactly that. You, you know, I've understood the concept for about two minutes now, and yet I've kept asking the most dumb questions. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, you do There's that, a pig then, right will... near us. If you, I can hear it. I got, a, I got a stick. I got the other stick. Oh, fantastic. I don't know where you are. Fantastic. Yeah. Ha ha. <laughs> My mastery of words oh, there is, you are. is crazy. Just, okay. where are you? Um, where are you? Uh, right behind you. Ah. Ooh. Righty ho, hatchet time. How do I do this? Oh, I got it. Oh, it's a knife. No, how do I? How do I make a hatchet? I think it's the two pieces and then the stick to the right of the top piece. Aha! Yes, that would make sense. I'm hewing it. I'm hewing it out with my bare hands. This is like watching primitive technology. Congratulations! We're gonna die again because the sun's going down. Yay! We made a hatchet. Quick, we gotta get back to that hole sure. and re-fortify it. Oh fuck! Go go go! <laughs> you don't even have time to celebrate your victories. Oh fuck! We made a hatchet! Yay! Oh, we're all gonna die. I don't even have any food, oh, so we might starve to death as well. Oh, but we'll see. You, uh, I've got. How do you not have food? Well, no, I have Quit cheat eating food. All of the things. I have cheat food. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You oh, there's a zombie the already there. Food. Block the hole. Block it. What? Block it. Um, with what? I don't know. Whatever um, you have. I have nothing. Uh, there you go. Okay. <laughs> Shit. Chances are... Th this worked out so well last night, I'm sure it'll work yeah. out this time. I was going to say we just jumped immediately for the same thing that didn't work last time, but... Uh... <laughs> and we're back. <clears throat> and we're back. <laughs> so, yeah, that's us in might. Day two, actually. Just day two, and we've already got ourselves a flint hatchet. It's pretty good. For, uh, especially for co-op play, I think might is actually easier to do on your own because um, it's just so hard to like coordinate your effort. You think, oh, there's two of us and we'll be able to like run around and one will take care of this and one will take care of that. But it's like you have to be you constantly adapting. Yeah, there's that. Yeah. And it's just like the adaptation that's necessary because you're like, okay, I'll handle food and then you'll run around and there won't be anything but grass to punch for a while and it's like oh, i didn't get enough food for both of us well i didn't find <laughs> shelter either there's no gravel in this and then it's you know like if you're alone at least in those first couple of days i think it's actually easier unless you got like uh, 
friggin' speedrunner team going at the game together. I think I think we're just bad. I definitely think having more people and specializing is the way to do it. We just need to work on our communication and actually well, I mean, I just need to know the game a bit better, I guess. <laughs> Eating kittens but, yeah. is just wrong, says Matty Hayes. It it can be. Um Eating kittens is delicious. No, I'm kidding. Yeah. <laughs> deliciously wrong. <clears throat> Another <laughs> Much thing is like uh <laughs> deliciously wrong <laughs> is virtual reality. I was trying to segue. I feel like you were trying to segue. <laughs> I was. I was trying to think of something deliciously wrong to do with VR, but uh, <laughs> all I could think of was porn, and I just like. I mean, and me. I mean porn, not porn this time. Oh, um, okay. Porn. Yeah. But oh, let's like let's get right. Let's jump into it. Porn. Virtual reality. Is it dead? Yes or no? Um, no. Thanks for watching, ladies and gentlemen. That was uh, today's topic, and uh, you've heard it here first. Virtual reality is not dead. So uh, please like and support us on Patreon. Smash that subscribe button. <laughs> and we'll see you next time. Yeah. Um, oh, we're not actually... I having... agree. Okay. <laughs> I, I... <laughs> you actually did it. <laughs> I agree that VR is not dead. Um, but it's an interesting title, because... VR definitely has had its problems with its troubled launch. There are ways in which subsequent... the current state of VR looks like it's not dead, but geez, the people running it, are they trying to kill it? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, they're yeah. not, but god damn, Gen 2 has not gone well at all, is my mm. interpretation. Generation 2 of the VR headsets. Um, before think, we dive like deeply in, actually, I think we should do another one of those qualifying statements. I like the qualifying statements. So why should anyone listen to either of us about VR? Uh, I myself uh, was gifted by Chris Hammond in the wake of Virtual Polar Expedition 2 a Vive headset at the release of Vives. We were doing VPE and he was given he gave thousands of dollars over the course of that charity event. And just as one of the comments that I made, shooting off my mouth throughout the thing, hey, Chris, when you're done with the thing, why don't you send, you know, when you're done sending thousands of dollars to all these worthy people, why don't you send me a headset? You got so much money lying around. That. Yeah. And then, yeah. Uh, like, two weeks later, knock on the door, UPS dropping off a Vive. So mm. my only claim to expertise in this area is that I was decidedly in the early adopters of the first wave of retail consumer grade stuff. Yes, Whereas and Harvey, you've you've kept up. Well, the thing is, you've also kept up to date with kind of comparing the specifications of the more recent releases with Generation Two. To an extent, um, yeah, yeah. Because I my got rid of the expertise is a little bit uh, more extensive. I got the. Oculus Rift DK2 in 2014, as soon as that was released. So pre-consumer version development kit. And I was developing with that quite a lot. Uh, that was how I got into programming and eventually what took me to university. Then at university last year, my undergraduate dissertation project was a virtual reality telepresence using an HTC Vive. So I also have a Vive. Mm. And... Uh, from that, I've just read a lot of literature on the science behind how VR works and kind of tricking your brain into seeing depth and the limitations with that, with motion sickness caused by it. So I've got a lot of the kind of scientific uh, hardware and programming experience background. Porn, I feel, is more well-informed on the actual specs of the hardware that's <laughs> on the market today. Don't say that. Today. I'm going to have to like, live up to that. I don't really know well, exactly. But... And also just on, on the kind of kerfuffle that's been their launch that we keep on alluding to. Yeah. Um, I don't really remember much because I kind of... When I transitioned into the kind of healthcare focus, there was a period of time when I just stopped thinking about VR completely and stopped uh, reading my Road to VR newsletters. So I kind of missed the Gen 2 launch a little bit. But uh, we're going to take you through, we're going to paint the picture of modern day commercial virtual reality and what that kind of means, how that's progressed, where it is now, and hopefully where it will go in the future. 
So I think now when Harv says too that uh, he has experience in the software and in the you know development of VR, you need to just say I am a VR developer because the man has made a virtual reality game that is playable that he played for us during virtual virtual polar expedition with friggin cameras that watch you as you move through the space multiple <laughs> like there was a lot going I can't on take, there i mean i can't take loads of credit for that because to be honest i think most of the programming was uh danny danny 26 2462 2642 24 danny some combination of four <laughs> numbers um it's, it's his he, pin number <laughs> really, he was like my my programming mentor because I was self taught up until that point, and uh, yeah, he does not like my code. <laughs> Did and <laughs> does not think very highly of, of some of my code, uh, which is fair because some of it's really awful. But um, I have developed other things though. So we did the VPE charity polar expedition, inspired, of course, by the KSP charity polar expeditions, of which KPE four is maybe coming next year, springish time next year. So keep your eyes out for that. But I've also developed um, a variety Sword of Art VR Online. mini games. Yeah. I've made Sword, on Sword Art Online, the entire VR MMO. Um, mm -hmm. You can go play that and go get killed by... Uh, <laughs> what was the name of... I, don't uh, I can't remember the name of the guy who developed that in the anime. But um, I made a menu, which is my most viewed video on YouTube, actually. Funnily yeah. enough. Really? Yeah. That I didn't know. Hmm. Yes, it is. It's nearly got a million views. And so there you go. Part of my ego, despite our last stream, part of me is just there going, come on, hit that arbitrary milestone. Come on, one million. <laughs> <laughs> so I can tell people I've got a video of a million views. Yeah. So click it now. Yeah. Click it today if you haven't. If you've already seen it, click it anyway. And then open up a anonymous browser tab and click it again. Mm. Set up a yeah. bot network. <laughs> Uh, so just a variety of little things and one big project, which was uh, robotic telepresence, where you have a robot remotely in a different room or across the world somewhere, and you put on a VR headset and you become the robot. You see oh, through cool. its eyes, you feel through its stubby little wheel-like sensors, and and uh, we can, I'll bring that up probably as time goes on, because that's really where most of my at least from the scientific point of view, perspective is. Um, mm. But I think chronologically, we should first talk briefly about kind of the initial launch. Um, I don't know about Houston. I don't know whether Houston has ever had um, any... Have you have you ever had a VR headset, Houston? Have you used uh, VR? Yeah, I don't suppose you've used uh, VR, have you, Houston? Oh, you don't suppose I've got VR? You even know who you're talking to, kid? I was rocking the DK1 back in 2012, burning my eyes out, squinting through the screen door effect just to catch some of that immersion. Hmm. Oh, well, yeah, I mean, I, I was a pretty early adopter, too. I got the uh, DK2 in 2014. Um, but the DK1, like, I've read some stuff about it. It was pretty basic, right? Pretty basic? It was the first commercially available VR headset to hit the market, man. Other than the Nintendo Virtual Boy, for its lack of pixels, frames, and low persistence, it was incredible for its time. You forgot to mention the lack of positional tracking as well, right? Yeah, well, you can keep your pansy-ass positional tracking. Us real VR pioneers grit our teeth and bear it through the sickness and the headaches, all for that sweet, sweet sense of presence. Wait, re real VR pioneer? Who the hell do you think I am? I've just been telling these guys about how I've been developing. Dude, I am a VR pioneer. <clears throat> so what you're saying, Houston, is that it was pretty bad? Well, it's not like headsets today are that much better. And they're way too expensive for what they're worth. My DK1 is holding up well enough. I mean, why would I drop over 400 bucks for a new one? In fact, I'll have you know I'm using it right now, watching videos on my massive virtual desktop. And it's perfectly... <laughs> Uh, you're watching videos rather than paying attention to the show? Oh, oh God, what the hell is going on in there, Houston? I'm fine. I'm fine. I didn't I throw up in the headset or... Oh, oh God, it's in the lenses. Oh, oh. No, the cable. Too oh. short. Oh. I gotta go. Oh.
Oh, okay. God. Yeah, no, that's... Thank God we don't have cameras in there. That's just disgusting. Mm. Can we get um, cleaning in aisle three, please? Oh, shit, we don't have any cleaners, and I'm no longer working at Walmart. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, actually, Houston, uh, if you could just uh, clean that up for us. Yeah, I'll work on that with all my free time. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, well, he sounds absolutely fine now. That's incredible recovery time. <laughs> you know, he's just, he's, yeah. he's incredible. He's incredible. <laughs> mm, so the DK1, the Oculus Rift Development Kit 1, was like the first real resurgence of VR to the mainstream commercial space. It wasn't technically a commercial product because it was for developers to begin making their games with, but it was very limited. It was less than the resolution that we now get per eye across both eyes. So really oh, wow. squinting through hmm. those pixels. I think it was I think it was 720p or something to that effect. You got like 640 per eye maybe at most. Yeah, I can't remember entirely. <laughs> but um it's come a not long good way anyway. maybe. Yeah, mm -hmm. it has come a long way. And like I told Houston, the fucking idiot over there, <laughs> uh, you didn't have positional tracking, which is not something that many people really think too much about because it's the orientation. It's the being able to look around and see the virtual world, which is most important. What happens when you don't have positional tracking is that you don't really think about it, but your head moves constantly, especially like your eyes move translate through space whenever you turn your head whenever you just slightly move your body you're getting those micro movements and more than you might realize that really helps you perceive the world around you and um kind of the spatial relationship between objects and things yeah, when you don't honestly, have that, that was a big thing like just the little bit of head wobble and everything um yeah. when i started doing videos for youtube in vr that was kind of a problem because apparently I have, you know, a weak neck or just some kind of syndrome coming on for all the little oh, wow. micro jitters and shakes. It just when I watched my own video back, I felt a little bit vomit just watching it. And then I tried to mm. make an effort to hold my head still and move in smoother, cleaner motions. Yeah, that doesn't work. No, it's, that's a good <laughs> point. Like if you look at video of, of just raw VR perspective. It's shaking all over the place. Mm. And that's because your head just does move a lot in space. Um, I guess you could do some kind of image stabilization, but you'd end up cropping out yeah. some of it. Yeah, it yeah. would depend it's on what you're problem, playing and how that's going to look and that kind of thing. But yeah, it was... Yeah. And image stabilization do... actually takes a long time to process too, so yeah, rendering that stuff true. would not help for YouTube. Um, <laughs> a lot of games actually are so hyper aware that they live or die based on YouTubers making videos of them because VR is so niche mm. that um, a lot of them really make pains to set things up so that you can stream in like a reasonable way so that you can get access to like raw video rather than perspective warped video. Um, and I've been out of the scene uh, a little bit lately. Uh, so like... I know that it was getting better, but I don't think that I probably got, was still around for the heyday of it because that was a major issue in the early days, you know, as yeah, a YouTuber, really was. Chris sends me this vibe and it's all about like, cool, I get to make content for YouTube now. And it was just the biggest headache and hassle trying to set it up so that, um, you know, sometimes you'd have to just capture one eye, which didn't really work. Yeah. And, and yeah. some games had like a window that would output it, but they're trying to like make sure that they're not overwhelming you're, you know, you're now rendering the same image three times. Um, yeah, once for both eyes and once for YouTube. And, yeah, yeah, so they're trying to figure out how um, that's going to work for your hardware and how they're going to keep up with your VR, and then they're trying to output a third time. So some developers just didn't have it in the beginning, and there was no, like, external well, output. Well, it's also just more development effort than you need to play the game, because it's kind of weird. It's only really in recent years that developers have made efforts to make things YouTube video compatible, you know, like <laughs> so that people making videos can record because people who make videos are a really tiny demographic. <laughs> Why would you develop <laughs> for them? Uh, people, but it's so that you can show your game in the best light. people care about who make videos <laughs> is a small yeah, demographic exactly. anyway. <laughs> yeah. Influencer. Yeah. <clears throat> so 
So by all means, DK1 very basic, but it just had such a good Kickstarter campaign. I believe it was the most funded Kickstarter ever up until... I don't know what's replaced it now, actually. Um, something did replace it eventually. Probably but some it, card game where you embarrass yourself or something. Yeah. <laughs> it really caught people's imaginations, and it caught my imagination, which is why I went through university and did computer science in the end. That was like... I can really point to VR and that Kickstarter campaign as something that just, I want to do that. That's what I want to do. And that mm. really got me. And it got a lot of people like that. So eventually, DK1 turned into DK2. Again, aimed at developers, but this time, positional tracking, higher oh. resolution, higher refresh rate. They'd figured out low persistence, which is uh, something that I think Houston maybe briefly mentioned earlier. Now, actually, do you know yeah, what low I'm, persistence is? I... I don't know what low persistence is, no. Um, mm, so. I also am curious about this positional tracking just in general on the DK2. Was it just gyroscopes, or did they have something no, exterior? No. So they had what the consumer Oculus Rift has, which is external webcams. Ah. Uh, two cameras. Oh, no, the DK2 had one camera. So just like a webcam. And, and actually, it looks the, at the commercial Rift dots. only came with one as well. Oh, it did, and then when the touch controllers came out, then they added a second one because they needed it. Yeah, maybe I don't know. Um, I just remember that. Yeah, being a because thing. the problem with one is that uh, if you've only got infrared LEDs on the front, when you turn around, oh, your head is in the way, so they can't see you enough. Mm. So then they start putting them on the side, and I think for the commercial one, they even have them actually on the back strap. They have infrared LEDs, mm. but if, especially when you've got hands and you like doing archery and kind of this one goes Good behind you and the webcam fist. is there and <laughs> <laughs> sorry the perspective is br brilliant i love this <laughs> how does he have such massive hands yeah um <laughs> big hands yeah, two you, you know what that means ladies or fellas whatever you're into you need two cameras to prevent things occluding each other and blocking sensors there are much better ways of doing positional tracking, which we'll get onto with uh, the kind of newer releases. But um, low, low persistence, persistence. Yeah. low persistence is interesting. When you look at any light, like any electric light, in the UK it's fifty hertz mains frequency. Uh, you guys have sixty, 60 is it, or forty? 60, sixty, right? Uh, so when you look at most like lights. You don't see it, but it's flickering constantly, and like cameras will pick it up. Um, so sometimes, if you see flickering video with the light going on and off in the video, it's because the frame rate is syncing up with the mains electricity frequency. And the reason your eye, the reason you perceive it as being constantly on, is because of your something organs known as suck. <laughs> um, critical fusion flicker frequency. Critical flicker fusion frequency, which is a very, very fancy term, which just means... They did the that on Dragon Ball rate. Z. Yeah, I believe it was the, when they did the... Yeah. Let's do it, <laughs> it now. Was, uh... <laughs> did that work? <laughs> kind of. I forgot how the movement was. It's a good thing you, you were... Oh, nearly. We nearly got there, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, it's the minimum frame rate at which you perceive... You go from perceiving something as flickering to being constant. Or you go from perceiving something to be a slideshow of images. I need to remember to have my hand over here. A slideshow of images to being a continuous moving video. So with that in mind, if you have a screen strapped to your face and you're showing relatively low it. frame rate footage, then you really like, uh, 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 and you end up with like vision blurring because they show a frame it stays on your face for a few milliseconds. But during that time, your head moves slightly. And it's like, if you see the world in this image, you turn your head and the entire world gets dragged with you because the display can't update fast enough. Oh yeah, yeah, I've had that experience in the Vive where it just like, yeah. you know, when it like lags out or something like that, and then you go to turn your head and it just like goes, ah, mm. I'm busy right now. And it's, <laughs> <laughs> Exactly. And you got that Houston's over there just thrown <laughs> up again. 
<laughs> yeah, really bad motion sickness. Okay. So that's terrible. <laughs> I don't have any clips for him. Just, just keep going. <laughs> so how can you alleviate that? Because you can't just crank up the FPS even higher. You've got to assume people have relatively low-end computers. Um, you can't solve everything by just cranking up the FPS. So the problem is that you're showing the incorrect image on the screen for too long. So if you don't have another frame available, just set it to black. Don't show an incorrect image. It's better to show blackness and to show nothing at all than to show an incorrect image for too long. Yeah, and you think, that. oh, but then it's just flashing black at you. But the frame rate is past that critical, critical flicker fusion threshold. I don't think it works. Oh, you just... <laughs> I don't think that works that way, Harv. I just tried it. <laughs> yeah, no. Well, you didn't do it fast enough. you got to do it past the, the critical flicker fusion threshold. My fingers won't move. So you do it fast enough that it's imperceivable to the eye. And the result is that every time your brain registers an image, it's accurate for the orientation of your head at that point in time. Okay. So the DK2 had that, which vastly improved um, motion sickness, amongst other things. Hmm. So that actually brings us to the consumer grade models then, right? Because they did two yeah. development kits and then uh, we started seeing actual riffs and vibes coming down the stream for us. Uh, my experience with the Vive was one of great glee, although because it had been gifted to me uh, from Chris Hammond, uh, I hadn't had to put the money into it, which was great, but now I didn't really have a video card powerful enough to do anything with it. So I ended up having to dig into the bank accounts and, and come up with, uh, I think at that point, I don't think I got went to the 1070. I, I think, I don't think it existed at that point. I think it was a 960, no. Because 970 was is 20, the... 2016 or 17, wasn't that? 1070? It might have been then. I might have gone to the, the VGA GTX 1070. Um, yeah. Uh, that, that's the only thing that makes sense. But anyway, I had to put the money in. And then uh, I swear the, the Vive sat in my house for a week. And, you know, it's exciting. It's virtual reality. And, and everybody's like raving about it online, about the room scale VR and how you've got to have this experience. And there it is sitting there. But in order to like use it, I have to take my computer apart, remove the GPU, put in a new GPU, put some drivers in, ba -ba -da 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 -da, and then I got to climb up on a ladder and hang two lighthouse mounts. <laughs> and then I got to wire this thing. that has got a breakout box and the wires are going to go over here. And is the room big enough? And I need to move things around. And so it was like a week just waiting to have the time to put it together. So the out of box experience was already like a, I've got a life going on. I don't have time for this thing that I'm excited about. <laughs> and then once I got into the headset, all of that disappeared because the experience of room scale and the vibe was just, it's epic. If you still have not to this day uh, had one of these modern virtual reality headsets put on your face and then, especially in the room scale scenario, and then walked around and turned your head and interacted with things, it is an experience to be had that cannot be replicated and, elsewhere. And you can have it without buying a headset. You can go to arcades and stuff now and they've got it. Um, mm. Don't know how many there are that give you the full room scale experience. I know there are at least a few. There's one just down the road in the city center of Chester, where I live, mm. um, which is entirely a VR like arcade place. So they're coming out. There's there's places now. Um, Whenever I drive past, past a place like that, too, it's so weird. Like, uh, I feel like maybe I've only seen one, but I, I remember what I did see is in my local area, we were driving around and we saw a uh, uh, escape room place. Yeah, I love and escape rooms. That's yeah. like, it's just so weird because it's a thing that didn't exist. And it's something that I now associate with watching like, um, people on YouTube, you know, out in LA and places where they, you know, do things like that. And then I drive down the street and see there's one near me. That's so weird. You should weird. do it. You should do an escape room if you haven't already. I live in Detroit. My house is an escape room, Harvey. <laughs> no, I, I don't have the, the free capital to, <laughs> to feel like, hey, I think I'll drop some money and go do an escape room. But if you donate today, <laughs> throw some bits I've at been us. Born. Mm. Patreon.com slash album porn, get exclusive behind the scenes benefits, and pay for porn to go to an escape room and make a vlog. We could do a it. video on that. You could go to one there, I could go to one here, we both film it, and then it's like a timed, like, who's gonna get out first? 
It's hard to do those yeah, videos, be though, because you can't show the, you know, how you figured it out or else you ruin it for everyone else. Well, yeah. I Wait mean, a second. How does this relate to virtual reality? <clears throat> Back to virtual reality. Um, anyway, yeah, Escape rooms, actually. You can get VR escape room games, which I remember one of them was really big around the time the CV1 and the HTC Vive came out. But let's cut to the chase. Big hurdle, uh, like potentially the worst thing about those headsets, and still to this day, isn't the price. The price is prohibitive, but people have money. The worst thing is the lack of content, the lack of games. I have used mine quite extensively, but far more for like development, for making games, and for playing Beat Saber than anything else. Like I played Elite Dangerous for a while, played a smattering of other games. The default uh, Valve Lab, which had a mini game for archery in it, I played that for more time than I've played <laughs> most other VR games. And I've not used my headset now in for gaming in like six months. Um, I had a similar experience, unusual. and then I, uh, yeah. you know, listed I didn't touch the thing for six months, and then I listed the Vive, uh, and you know, sold it to somebody who was excited about it, uh, used for like mm. three hundred and fifty dollars or four. I don't even remember what I got for it, but uh, sold it to somebody in the local area. And yeah, that's the thing is that as it exists right now, the the games that at least back then I don't know what's going on with VR gaming today because been out of it for six months uh, or more at this point, but. Um, you know, they're not the things that draw you back in that keep you going. Um, they are yeah. kind of micro experience games, and it's a way easier and a way better thing to be developing at this stage of VR if you're trying to, you know, put together a massive character based RPG, first person, literally first person, because you're VR, <laughs> you know, kind of thing. This is that's development on a massive scale that when you're not having to consider that you have a real human being to shove into your virtual world takes years and years and years and years and vr needed games and so what we've got is a lot of micro experiences and they're the kind of things that you know you come back to for a few weeks a couple of months you don't touch it you come back again but they're not the things that keep making you go "Ooh, i want to jump back in uh and there's just the problem is i really feel like oculus in particular saw this coming and even, even Valve, to some degree, they saw it coming. They knew, like, hey, we're launching a platform for games. We need games. Which is why they rushed out the DK1 and the DK2 to try and let developers have the hardware with which to start developing stuff. Even by the time of release, there still wasn't much. Even two years later, there still weren't many full games that were enough to keep people coming back. And that has been... If anyone says, like, hey, man, VR was a flop, that's probably what they're referring to. Because you don't, there's no like single game that everyone is like, oh man, this really is what you like. I play this like every other day now. You have periods where you go through that and then you kind of die out. The only exception to that, really, for me, was Beach Saber, which, yeah. if you haven't heard of it, two lightsabers, blocks coming at you, slash the right blocks with the correct lightsaber in the correct direction. Intense physical activity, really fun. Makes use of that room um, scale. Yeah. yeah, really puts you into. Yeah. I mean, and it's a forward-facing game, so it could theoretically be played in a chair kind of thing. It's not a three-dimensional yeah, no, kind yeah. of a deal, but it really does. Yeah. You know, you stand in the middle of the room. You don't have to run around. That's another thing. Is like the room scale concept. Room scale really, really makes it feel incredible to be in a giant yeah. space and be able to walk around. But then what we found out, and how could they have known this, Harv? What we found out is that the rooms of our houses aren't empty. Who saw that one coming? What? So, yeah. What? The idea of having, like, more than just having the, like, 2.5 meter minimum or something of a room that either is empty or that you can conveniently move a table out of the way every time you want to play turned out to be, like, yeah. room scale is so awesome, but if I want to play... And this is another. This is a everything. huge thing. Yeah, this is a whole topic in and of itself. Is if I want to play VR, um, I gotta set it up. Sometimes just opening the game is kind of irksome. Some games want to be opened when you're in yeah. the headset. Some games don't want to be opened when you're in the headset. If you're recording it, well, then you gotta set it up that's before you're in the headset. 
that's a bit better nowadays because Steam has really integrated that quite well. So it's less of a pain now. I would say that it's still just a pain to just have to put on the headset to turn yeah. on the tracking station. Headset and turn, on, like, and then with the Vive, yeah. uh, that was unless you upgraded, unless you paid for more and bought the extra clips and got the headphones and that kind of thing, then the Vive is making sure you got everything plugged in, you get the headset in, you put that thing on, now you're blind, you're looking for the remote controls, you need the controls on, um, and I can tell you this too, my experience with, uh, with day one, you know, Vive, the controllers were fine in use, but they took six to eight months to send down a firmware patch that finally made the controllers just work when I turned them on. What oh, would happen they is... They didn't work for you. One of them would sync and then the other one would not. And then I could turn one of them off or one of them on and the other one would come on, but I couldn't get both of them to turn on and actually connect to the PC at the same time. And it was a known issue and there was uh, a whole bunch of different methods for it. And I found out like if you leave the USB plugged in for both of them, turn them on while they're both on USB, wait for it to sync and then unplug them, Sometimes that would work, sometimes it wouldn't, but that was usually like the process where after about five minutes of struggling, you would get it to work. So what you have now is headset on, blind gasping, you know, uh, trying to find the controllers. Uh, now I've got the controllers in my hand. Even if you turn the controllers on ahead of time, now I've got to like make sure that the controllers actually mm -hmm. synced up. Oh, they're not syncing. Controllers set out, headset on, controllers in hand. Shit, I need audio. Uh, controllers back down. Reach over, find the headset, headset over the top of the giant thing that's already on your head. There you go. Or the earbuds in, which are uncomfortable. And that was the way they shipped the first Vive. No, like, audio built into it. And what which, I to be thought honest, was going on in the market at that place, I think Rift really got a nice boost out of that. Because Rift did not have the room scale thing. I mean, they had it. It was capable. But they were selling it. Uh, more as we're the seated experience and we're, we got one camera with our, you know, launch uh, version of this headset. Yeah. And, um, like, that was a big drawback against them. But then when you started doing the comparisons and stuff, the Rift was a headset that mainly because it just happens in a seat and because they had the friggin', you know, earphones built in, you could just pick it up and put it on and grab the controllers and go. Yeah, so... I don't want to stick too long because there's quite a history now since then. But um, Oculus saw the whole room problem coming. And I remember quite disliking Oculus at the time because of the marketing being, this is a sit-down experience. It's like, hey, you can do room scale, but why would you? It's a sit-down experience. And I was like, you would do it because room experience is awesome, man. It's so much better. <laughs> but they saw the lack of space coming. They also saw that if they could be slightly cheaper than Vive, they would get more sales. And I think they did. I think they did sell better oh, really? than Vive. I didn't know. I don't yeah. know this, the figures, but that's... No, I don't know them I off the top of my head. It. I'm kind of bullshitting, but I, I think they did. At, at what was it, like 900 eight or $900 uh, at launch or something for the Vive? Yeah, I would um, imagine that the, the 500 six, I think, for Rift? 600 pounds. I don't know what that was. That was $7,000 USD. Pounds. You know, there was pre-Brexit. Uh, <laughs> Pre-Brexit, yeah. Um, yeah, I guess 500 dollars. No, I don't know. You know what? I don't know. I paid 740 for my Vive, or maybe 640 I forget now. It was expensive anyway. But, um, so, to kind of wrap up there, with the first gen, you have these various room scale technical like you had the controllers um the problem the sinking problem with the controllers technical issues like that my vive had flickering screen uh for the first you know few months that i had it i had to get it refurbished oh. so yeah various issues i think i tripped over the cable at one point playing um oh i can't remember the name of it but it was a really good archery game at the time but again like a mini a mini game is that one in I the, tripped um, over the cable and in the building something the, uh, the archery yeah, game that was in yes. the sort of dojo. In a, in a dojo kind of thing. Mm. Um, I remember that one, yeah. It was I remember intense, watching man. you play that good. one, I believe. Yeah, oh, great. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, some people adopted. Some people went in, early adopters-ish, early-ish. And what they got was kind of a less than what they hoped for experience overall. And I think it's pretty 
ubiquitous that plenty of people just kind of stopped using their VR regularly. Then you get to Gen 2. By Gen 2, they really should have had all this figured out. It should have been, like, they needed it to be the mass adoption. Like, Facebook at the time, having acquired Oculus by this point, were aiming for 1 billion users with a VR headset by 2020 or something ridiculous like that. Okay. They were going, <laughs> trying to go big. And, mm. um... Just Are they going quite... home yet? Because that didn't work out. <laughs> go big yeah. or go home. They went, uh, yeah. like, it just, and the thing with Gen 2 is that they knew. They knew exactly what they needed to do, and then they they didn't do it. It just didn't work out. Like, they tried to do it. They made a good, solid effort, but it had all the same issues. Day one release, bugs, patches over the course of months coming down trying to fix things. Um, if I recall correctly, the um, the Rift S... Uh, replacing the Rift, they always said, they were always up front about this, and I think it was great for them to say it, and a great marketing tactic, and it was also just, like, the position that they needed to take in the marketplace. I'm totally behind the idea of Gen 2 VR is actually 1.5, which is what they were saying about Rift S. This is not a giant yeah, change. We, we're just putting out the, the equipment, and the whole goal was we're going to make sure that this experience is easy to get into. You open the box, you plug it in. Uh, once it's set up, uh, you know, you just grab it and go. And they were trying. They made the effort. It didn't work. There were so many reports uh, of the Rift S having these day one bug issues with um, screens that were either flickering or just going black, uh, not being able to get any output to it, uh, people having problems with uh, different connections and stuff like that. And that was the, like, day two feedback that you do not need, that you need to not have, in fact, if you're going to be doing what they were trying to do, which was say, this is a technology ready for consumers. You can buy it, plug it in. You don't need to be, you know, a wizard. You don't have to spend hours, you know, figuring out how the cables go. Just boom, it's ready to go. And it just didn't happen. Mm. Although, and... although Ooh, it kind of did that. happen with their completely, you know, computer-free headsets. They have been incredibly yeah. well-received. The uh, Rift uh, Go as well as the Rift Quest, right? I mean, it's not even, is it yeah. Rift Quest? It's Oculus Quest, not Oculus Quest. Oculus Quest, I think. But yeah, yeah, same difference, I mean. Those have been incredibly well-received. Amazon reviews of like 4.5 and above out of 5 stars from, you know, all of the people who have bought them. So it's a large community of people who are feeding back that this works great. Uh, something that's completely contained. I just prick it up. The, I've put the games already on it. SD card, boom, ready to go. That worked. The connection mm. to the PC thing... Gen 2 has failed, and it's not just Rift's fault. It's not just Rift's fault. Well, this is, this is where technology gets really interesting as well, because like we are saying with the Vive, what we didn't really mention in one of the big issues with, not only have you got to put on all these things, you've also got to get the wire behind your, <laughs> behind your head in the right kind of way so that it doesn't snag on your chair yeah. and so on and so forth. I look like I'm having a seizure on screen right now, but um, <laughs> yeah. So they didn't they didn't have a choice for Gen One because they couldn't drive costs up even further. Otherwise, no one would have bought it. But for Gen Two or Gen One point five, you start seeing these inside out positional tracking technologies, which allow some of the strain that was going from the lighthouses with the Vive and the webcams with uh, Oculus to be done on the headset. And that allows you to get this um, completely computer-free uh, Oculus Quest Vive Cosmos, is it, that's coming out? I don't even know. If, no, is the Cosmos? No, the Cosmos is wired. Yeah, it's but wired. Vive, it's a PC-enabled thing, but they are using the inside-out tracking. Yes, but there is a Valve wireless one, I think. Is there? I don't know. I'm not aware. Maybe that's going to be. I'm not sure. There um, definitely will means, be if if they're still a company or if Steam decides yeah. to stay in that business. Uh, yeah, I was going to say by all means they need one after the uh, success of the completely portable headsets from Rift's end of, end of things. Yeah, and actually right yeah. now, like my per, my perception of Vive is that they brought like where Rift it answered um, like 
what worked and what didn't in the scenario to say, and we're going to try and come up with a all-in-one, you can just put it on and play it package, and that worked great, and they tried to make a version of that for uh, you know, wired to the PC and just too many issues, too many bugs, too many day one complaints, uh, hardware failures too. L like you were saying, you had to send one back. Lots of people, uh, from, uh, who picked up the Rift S mm -hmm. had to send them back. Um, they made an effort. They were going in the right direction. They fell a little bit on their face, uh, in one third of their offerings. Meanwhile, I'm sitting here literally right now. I am looking at the listing of what Vive has brought like just throughout the the generations all of their headsets and i'm seeing nothing like they brought nothing to gen 2 we have nothing whatsoever to improve on what we were doing before except for eh, maybe there's a little bit greater pixel density in this and we yeah. changed the connections a little bit and yeah we're using that fancy inside out tracking on one of the models that we make but all the other ones are still lighthouses and we've got a uh, industry, or we've got sort of a business model that's built on the upgrades and the extra things. And maybe you need another lighthouse, and maybe you need a wireless mm. thing, and maybe you want to strap some headphones on there. And now it's all about like an all in one pick it up and put it on package. And like the Cosmos just doesn't even have a place in the market. I'm looking at the old Vive versus the Cosmos and saying all you've done is changed like pixel density. And there's other things you could say about it, but functionally for gameplay. Yeah. There's, and there's that's not, not much even, here. So pixels, pixel density is a really important thing, but it's not that crucial thing that was holding them back. Like, people didn't not buy Vive because they looked at the spec and went, well, there's not enough pixels. <laughs> that, no one made that decision based on that alone. Definitely not. Uh, so, troubled launch then. Does this mean... I mean, you said no to begin with, but now... Uh, do you think that VR is dead? No. No, me neither. I think it's and... a troubled time that we will move through, um, and mm. that Rift is leading the way with its all-in-one stuff, basically. <laughs> well, yes, and also that there's a big unspoken assumption here, which is that we're talking exclusively about uh, VR gaming, basically, which is a fair assumption to make, because Rift and Vive were completely marketed at gamers. Mm. And the reason for that, when you think about it, is because these are quite intensive headsets. You've got to render the image twice, like we've already talked about. You've got to render it in higher resolution than you would for a normal desktop monitor, because and the pixels are so close to the eye. higher frame rate, frequency, Higher frame 90 rate, hertz because you've or... got motion sickness and mm. other computation going on as well. The reason you go for gamers is because gamers already have super high performance computers that can run all that stuff. And in the Gen 1, we didn't see any of these wireless onboard complete packages other than like Samsung Gear VR, which ran off your phone, because anything other than phones, even phones, didn't have like the power. Like everyone's laptop is not good enough to run VR properly, the hmm. common laptop. And that is what makes it such a niche market anyway that they may as well go for gamers who have got that thing and so gaming is where it's naturally the natural progression has gone to mm. the main reason i think vr isn't dead is because vr's main i want to qualify something as well but vr's main uh capacity to really kind of make an impact on humanity isn't in gaming like games can be cool and all but it's got a much more profound implication than just, hey, I'm more immersed in my game now. And the thing I wanted to clarify, from here on, when we talk about VR, we should really be talking about AR, which is augmented reality. And a point I like to make to people whenever I bring up this stuff, because I'm a bit of a obsessive, is that augmented reality is the entire spectrum. Whoa. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> Augmented reality is the entire spectrum from all the way of 99% of your vision is the real world until 99% of your vision is a virtual world. VR is one point along that spectrum and it's the 100% of your vision is a virtual world. Hmm. 
Hmm. So when people talk about like, hey, I don't care about VR, but AR is really good, or oh, AR is boring, it's VR where it's at, you're kind of comparing two different things. AR encompasses everything. It's just that AR is less catchy to say. So when we carry on and talk about VR now, just keep in mind that we're not limiting ourselves to just completely virtual. We're talking about AVR, not just AR. But, but yeah, VR I actually looked recently um, because I was like very tempted when Rift S was launching because I was like inside out tracking 400 bucks. I can use that on the live streams again. And I always wanted to try the Rift uh, to be able to cross compare uh, with the Vive experience that I'd had. Um, you know, the reports were Rift had the better controllers on launch day one, like the best controllers anybody had ever felt. At least that's what they were saying back yeah. then. You know, yeah, just, wow, yeah. these controllers. Uh, so I wanted to, like, have that experience with Rift S, and I didn't have the money regardless, but uh, if I did, I still would have been like, Mrr! because of all of the day one issues. But I did start looking at, because I saw an ad for my local micro center, uh, which is just a, you know, computer place over here, um, that does, like, these incredible rebate deals and stuff. You can put together a computer for 30 bucks or something. <laughs> you can get a <laughs> yeah. lot off. You buy the CPU and the motherboard and the Merit RAM, and they're like, here's three rebate things. Mail them in, and you'll eventually get the money back. Uh, they were advertising, I think, uh, Hewlett Packard and HP build of, you know, uh, is it Microsoft's um, AR headsets HoloLens. now? HoloLens. Yeah, HoloLens. HoloLens, yeah. So, you know, you've got all these different manufacturers that are building off of somebody else's design scheme, and they had one that I believe was, like, less than $200. And I was like, yeah, mm, mm, less than $200. Mm. Ah, and the th here's another thing before, because we, we talk for so long, each of us, and then <laughs> we need to start talking over each other so we can, like, hit on the points, but, like, the pixel count kind of thing and pixel density and higher resolution, nobody cares. Nobody, nobody who has played in a VR headset gives a fuck, okay? No one cares uh, well, about the pixel density. No one I mean, who's buying VR headsets cares about, like, and the market has proven yeah. this because they keep, like, shoving more pixel density in, and Gen 2, if we're even going to call it that, is just, uh, here's more pixels, we don't know what to do with this. And what we care about, what is, like, heard over and over again, is wider fields of view, and, you know, easier access to it. But, like, when you come down to it, we as a human race are just thrilled to sit with a handheld that's about that big and look down at somebody in this little tiny thing who's running across the field with a thing over their head floating down and falling on horses. I'm trying to do a Link reference here. Um, oh, we so are I, thrilled I to play that. Dark Souls on a, on a tablet-sized device with... You know, it's good pixel density, but it's a tiny little screen. We don't care. Like, good games have never truly been about graphics. Graphics may have been there in a in a good game, but it wasn't the thing that, oh, the graphics! Like, if you have to rely on graphics, it's the big budget summer film. It didn't have any, like, thing going for it other than explosions and Michael Bay. Um, you know, graphics have never been as important as having you know, the, the fuller, larger experience and what the community of people who have had VR uh, have given the feedback in, in this generation too, at least, when it came out, is like, they go, yeah, it seems a little bit crisper and clearer. I can read some of this stuff. That's cool. But let me tell you what sucks. Like, they say that and then they go on to what doesn't work and what hasn't been addressed. And it doesn't seem to be a concern for people. Like, we would be happy with the same resolutions we were using on the Vive headset if you gave us 140 degrees of you know, well, field of vision instead of 110. Okay, so there are, there are technical reasons for why they can't just increase the field of view. It's a much trickier problem, both in terms of... Like, you hear people complain, and people do complain, about um, god rays and chromatic aberration and stuff that the lenses cause mm. when you try and crank up the field of view you either have to make the display around the eyes or you have to use some really fancy lenses to get that kind of field um and if you use those lenses you get worse uh black colors and light rays into your eyes and other stuff like that and you stretch those pixels wider which is why i think that they were trying to go dpi dots per inch first and then field of view because the field of view is the trickier problem, and like if you're already dealing with god rays, you don't want to have really 
blown up pixels as well. But moving kind of no, into the I short said term, I should near future. we should be interrupting each other. And my my suggestion to that is that like people will complain about God rays, and you know I can see the fence if I if I look close, I can see this kind of stuff. But like most players say. You know, when you're in the game, it doesn't really bother you that much, or it's not, you know, when you're involved in an experience, it's it's not yeah, a I pulling mean, you out of the experience thing. And that's what VR brings, is that whole, like, experience of immersing you. And it's just, like, Gen 2, true Gen 2 of VR is going to have to be field of view. It's got to be field of view, because none of this is anything, really. Look, I can move my head now, and I don't need to hang two things in my room first. That's a one-time affair that I had to do. Oh, we've gone to a whole new generation of VR. If it's just the same field of view and crisper graphics, it's it, it's not going to make a difference. No, it's not a reason to upgrade the headset you have now. If you've got I disagree that unless the field of view is, like, twice as good, I don't think... Any realistic improvements to field of view are going to come that quickly. Um, you've got some displays Curved which are LEDs, really high end man. headsets now Curved LEDs. that are like two displays. But just to cap off talking about this topic, because you just want to keep pulling us back into it, pawn. When I'm is trying that to what move we're on, here for what's that, that's the point? We're talking about Gen <laughs> Two, and is it dead or not? It's just no, like, we're talking these about are the main VR, issues. Is it dead or not? Which is more a right, VR, VR. Or augmented. Like segue. So this is VR. <laughs> well, I will talk like this. We should argue more. Is that Get higher rate. the gap that I really see that we really need is wireless, inside out, blah, 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 that connects to your computer without you having to buy an extra wireless adapter. It connects wirelessly rather than having the cable and everything. So it's it really is like a put once on, but be able to play the games from your computer. If we're talking about games... Because I feel like gamers aren't picking up these standalone mobile headsets because they're not on their Steam libraries on running from their high-end computers. And I feel like that is quite important. Um, yeah, the aftermarket anyway. kind of thing also. Because that is another like factor here is that um, there were... You had the, the products launch and then you had... Um, you had the products launch... And then you had uh, the developments made, and each one of the different, like, manufacturers brought something to the table. And, you know, like, Rift was highly used, like, the controllers are great, and, oh, the audio is so much better. And reviewers were out saying, you know, what we prefer, prefer on the Rift is this, what we prefer on the Vive is that. And it just looks like what they've brought to market, again, I know you want to get off Gen 2, but in Gen 2 is, like... Gen 1.5. Neither of them, we should really just start calling it that, yeah, because it looks like that. Uh, neither of them seem to have learned much from the other. I mean, Rift is doing better in the category of learning, but the fact that, you know, the um, the Rift now has these little, the Rift S has these little headphone things that are, is, they just kind of blow the audio past your ear. They're built in, there's no cups, there's no, like... It, like, they knew in their first generation, stereo sound is important to immerse you in the environment. And then the second generation, 1.5 rather, they threw that away. And probably so that they could afford to cram more pixels in the, in the LCD. Mm -hmm. And it's like, but you knew that, you had that, you hit that, you, f you like gave that up. Meanwhile, your competitor realized, oh, Rift got a lot of praise for the headset things. Uh, Vive Cosmos better have some flap down cups on their heads. And so they did it, but you've abandoned what was working, but they picked that pup. But meanwhile, they aren't doing what you did that was working. And it's just like, ah, get on the same page. Listen to the consumers. Like, you don't just take the feedback that you got, that you heard about that your competitor, competitor was getting that was like good for them and go, we gotta do that. No, also remember what you heard that was good about <laughs> yours, and don't throw that out with the bathwater. That's a baby! <laughs> you could sell that. <laughs> so, right, hard forcing you onto a new topic Okay. Um, when we talk about augmented reality and virtual reality, the technology is going to get there. For all our gripes about, oh, you chose pixels over whatever, the technology is getting there. And you talk about VR being dead because not enough people have adopted it for playing games and stuff. And there's not enough games. If you look at the size of the industry, gaming is like a hundred and twenty billion or something dollar industry right now. Forbes, I think, 
are predicting that VR by 2022 is going to be larger than gaming in terms of its economic value. Mm. But if people aren't buying things for games, then what the hell is that money? It's all the tech companies who are seeing where VR and AR is going and are piling in the, the money there. Mm. You've got Intel and the kind of the big boys, uh, NVIDIA. I mean, NVIDIA are already in because of gaming, but big tech companies moving towards it. And it's not for gaming that they're doing it. It's for everything else. It's for the kind of impact on humanity that this technology is going to have. Because if we assume that, hey, there's, the, there's investment in the technology, the technology is going to get there. We're going to go from ski masks down to more like glasses type things where really it is, you can put it on and you can wear around and it might take a few years. But if we say, hey, we're going to get there eventually, then that opens up a whole world of just, you think everyone uses phones all the time? Think about how <laughs> phones have augmented our human experience. Imagine having phones, but everywhere and the kind of interactivity and the ability to just procure knowledge and information yeah. instantly added information antisocial see someone and you remember that you know or just like starts popping up information about them or you're meeting someone new and they've set up a friggin card that tells you the things you need to know or yeah yeah or let's say you're an engineer you walk into a building because you're there to fix the electricity and you just go oh yeah i see through that wall that's where it's broken and then you just go fix that you know mm. because with all these like uh, architectural firms now are using VR, a he well, AR, a hell of a lot. Like the original manufacturing, uh, well, not manufacturing, but the original blueprints for buildings and things nowadays are kept in 3D models for the explicit future purpose of engineers being able to, someone who's new, is to, the, new to the building, you walk into the building, you sync with the building on your on your phone which connects to your AR glasses and then you can see the, the infrastructure implant in the back and of pipes your skull. and the electricity and yeah. <laughs> I mean it's getting there. I went to mm. uh, a London university for an open day thing, general science and technology. One of them was literally talking about implantable microchips that could like stimulate certain parts of the brain. Um, it's it's not sci-fi it's like the technology we know it works and it will work eventually it really is just a matter of time um i referenced the whole yeah, thing man. where you can put on a friggin like stylist like you're getting your hair bleached and you know dyed or something like that that they've got these things you put on and the cups and everything like that and um you can like control a computer you can move a mouse and stuff with a little bit of training like that's amazing that we can like pick up uh, whatever it's picking up, electromagnetics or heat signals yeah. and stuff like that, and be able to control a computer. And we didn't have to plug something into your spinal cord or your cerebral mm. cortex. It's just a hat you put on and boom. So yeah, uh, AR is going to be a, you know, a huge thing that shapes the future and probably for the worse. Um, <laughs> no, it'll, it'll introduce just a whole new load of just things for old people to be angry at, you know. Goddamn well, kids even, playing their Pokemans in the park again. You know, now they'll actually be like chasing each other and chasing the Pokemans down and bumping into people and shit. <laughs> I mean, the funny thing is that by the time uh, we get there, the old people are going to be us. <laughs> mm -hmm. And we're going to no, be I like, hell oh, yeah! <laughs> hell yeah, <laughs> AR! <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, the kids um, are going to be looking back going, what are you still using that AR shit? Dude, that's yeah, so we've already got. Uh, yeah, you're still using a physical display. We've just got nerve signals directly <laughs> to the neocortex. Just get your eyes replaced already, God, Grandpa. Wake up to yeah. the future; it's here. <laughs> oh, but yes. So, in essence, VR for a gaming launch seems to have flopped a little bit, in part due to the technology still not quite being there, and in part to some bad marketing and decision making on behalf of the two kind of major players in that space. Yeah. But the industry is still growing because of the massive tech investment and 
it's gonna it's more it's far more than just about gaming um it really is let me so tell you what vive is fucked up too uh vive cosmos uh they decided that uh they should have their controllers like lit with leds constantly you know because the infrareds weren't enough so we're gonna have it all lit oh, up okay. oh i take it back so cool. vr's fucking dead yeah god <laughs> <laughs> so now their controller battery life is down to like two hours well that's really yeah. crap just yeah. like <laughs> unsolving problems that have been solved it's like yeah hey, what were we doing yesterday i don't know hey i carved this circular thing out of wood what should we call it i think someone's made it it's the wheel we did that on thursday ted <laughs> quit going backwards yes quit going backwards and start going forwards into the future and when you go forwards into the future you've got to be more and more savvy and aware of the threats that are out there in the technological space and for that reason today's show is sponsored by a company called your vpn protecting you from a myriad of dangers let's say that uh, that exist in the world today and will continue to so i believe we have uh, an ad to run yeah is that right houston yeah. you want to roll our your vpn sponsorship ad have you ever used public Wi-Fi? Maybe you were at an airport or a coffee shop. You probably connected without a second thought, but do you know who might be keeping tabs on the network traffic? Can you even be sure that the hotspot is legitimate? Could it be set up by a criminal who's hunting your personal data? Think about the passwords, banking details, credit card numbers, and any other private details you send every time you go online. Without a VPN, your connection is fully open. A lot of random people or devices can look at your data, log it, and use it in ways you can't control. That includes your ISP, employer, the Wi-Fi router in that coffee shop we mentioned, or literally anybody. Maybe that guy right behind you, right now. He's on the same Wi-Fi as you. He's watching. He's smarter than you, and he knows programming things, and he's stealing your data right now! With a VPN connection, you can have peace of mind knowing that your data is encrypted and IP address hidden. Your ISP can no longer see which websites you visit, your employer has no proof that you're watching porn at work, and that guy behind you in the coffee shop now has no choice but to follow you home tonight. You can't snoop on your private pictures out in public now, because you're using a VPN, right? Well, what choice does he have? If he can't steal your data online, that leaves only stealing your data from your home computer. Don't sleep tonight, buddy. Don't even blink. Sit at the bottom of your stairs with a shotgun and just wait for that creepy coffee shop guy to try and sneak in. Yeah, that's right. You'll get him. As soon as you see that guy's stupid face, you'll blast it right in! <laughs> and that's why we created your VPN. Meet Gavin. So, Gavin is the result of cutting-edge algorithms and machine learning techniques. <laughs> uh, no, actually, I'm more the result of a number of poor life choices. Wait, are you trying to tell them I'm a robot? No, 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 the result of the algorithms was to just hire a human to Okay, do it. cool, because, you know, I've sold my body in a number of ways, but I think I'd remember if somebody turned me into a robot. I mean, probably. Gavin here provides intelligent, real-time digital security to all documents and files on your home computer. With the Gavin's state-of-the-art encryption- Hang on, I thought this was a security guard gig, okay? I don't get all this digital stuff. I can't even use my laptop without something called your VPN popping up and making everything run slow. Just be quiet for a moment, Gavin. <laughs> Please? Thank you. With Gavin's state-of-the-art encryption, your home computer is secured against physical, real-world attackers. And with your VPN Plus, you can install your VPN across all devices in your home. Gavin will monitor each device in real time to ensure no creepy coffee shop guys are sneaking into your home to steal your data. I gotta watch all the rooms in the house in real time? I have two eyes. Yes, Gavin. 
Real time, Gavin. <laughs> Real time. What more could you want? Oh, oh, I've not even mentioned government surveillance yet. Wait, the government's involved in this? No, no, man, no. I can't be involved in this, okay? I I've been to prison. I'm out. I'm clean. Ish, I'm not going back. I got a daughter, man. I gotta take care of her. The Snowden leaks and years of follow-up reporting have shown us the vast scope and reach of worldwide surveillance. It would be illegal for police officers to search your home without a warrant, yet they'll do it anyway. To steal your data. And Gavin here will defend your home for you. Nah, man, you are insane. I'm out of here, okay? I fought the cops last time. I learned my lesson with NordVPN, okay? I'm not doing... Why is there a gun? In... How did you put a gun in my hand? And why are there no serial numbers? Okay, I am a convicted felon, but this is not my... What are you doing to me? Your VPN will protect you not only from ISP tracking, but also from blanket government surveillance. <laughs> and that'll be the last time that the creepy guy behind you in that coffee shop will even think about stealing your personal date. <laughs> your VPN. Secure your data today. And as a limited time offer, if you complete your purchase within the next 8 hours and 52 minutes, you can get your VPN with 70% off. Grab the deal before it's too late. Okay, none of the doors are opening. I'm gonna need you to let me out, please. Also, 8 hours and 52 minutes? Like, from now? Because we're recording it, nobody's gonna see it. No, no, just 8 hours and 52 minutes from whenever they click on the so webpage. So it's not a limited time offer, then. Be quiet, Gavin. Uh, yes, sir? Your VPN. It seems to break a lot of your other software, but hey, at least we paid PewDiePie a lot of money. Can I leave? <laughs> pixels, pixels are the not pixels. important. No one cares about pixels. It's just the pixel There's counts not don't enough matter. Pixels, to... Gavin. It's about the immersive <laughs> experience. It's pixels. <laughs> you... Oh, we're back. Um, geez. Thanks, Har Harvey. Shh, we're back. <sighs> Houston. Um, so uh, your VPN, a wonderful service available today. If you uh, sign up on their website with the uh, affiliate code uh, Harvin Pawn, you'll get 20% off your first usage of Gavin. Uh, mm. And uh, I believe uh, he will also defend you in the event that someone tries to attack you during a virtual reality play session. So it yes. all connects. Yeah. Mm, it does. Because obviously, defenseless, you can't see what's going on around you, you can't hear anything. Have right. Gavin there with a baseball bat right behind you, and just, he can tell you. Or he can just kill whatever comes in. In fact, you know? I just um, signed up for it, but it hasn't, like, come in yet, and I don't feel quite safe. In fact, I feel as though something's been stolen from me even during this show, which is weird. I, it can't be true, but it's... I, I think we should all sign up for your VPN, and it helps support the show. So you go find out where that website actually exists anywhere on the internet, and if you do, oh, you I, let I us believe, know. Oh, uh, I believe it does exist. It's um, p-a-t-r-e-o-n dot com slash harv and porn. Oh. Um, that's okay. h-a-r-v-a-n-d-p-a-w-n. Yeah, <laughs> that's a little-known website, but it's a, it's a pretty good startup company, and, uh, you know, they need the funds. They need a bit of support, so um, well worth, well worth uh, supporting. Mm -hmm. I want to talk about that script. So I made that video in pretty short order, just with a whole lot of B-roll footage, as you could tell. Um, there's a really good website for getting that stuff, by the way, called Pexels, P-E-X-E-L-S, Watermark free, royalty free, super high quality. It's got a relatively small library, but it's good. Um, but that script, I lifted a lot of it directly from NordVPN's uh, webpage. <laughs> and so on screen right now, in just a few seconds, maybe already, uh, you should be able to see, yeah, there's a link there. Oh. Um, and it's just some of the marketing like the whole 70 percent offer thing at the end where hey eight hours 52 minutes left like they literally do that stuff and i 
I'm like I'm satirizing them just for the sake of parody. But the way a lot of it is written, I just couldn't help but use it directly. <laughs> like that bit about the police. It's um oh, where is it? Uh where it says something about you know, oh, the police aren't allowed to raid your home without a warrant. And then they say, but online hackers and government surveillance can easily get into your data. And I just had to change it to, but they'll do it anyway. <laughs> <laughs> they will come to your house. I mean, you know, they're clearly gearing up for it. I, uh, if you ask the Branch Davidians, oh, they're not there anymore. If you visit Waco, oh, Texas, I'm... you might be able to find some of the people. Don't, don't visit Waco, Texas. It's not going to work out, probably. no. no. There's, there's a great, there's a specific frame in that video which just cracks me up because a lot of the B-roll footage is actually stolen from NordVPN's own marketing videos <gasps> as well. Oh, copyright. It's parody. It's allowed. <laughs> um, there's one frame which this super creepy message comes up on screen and it says something along the lines of they might be watching you right now. <laughs> and just I like the your VPN logo comes up on my version of the video and then beneath it they might be watching you right now <laughs> <laughs> so that whole thing was inspired by just the creepy out of context NordVPN marketing NordVPN if you're watching we would take a real sponsorship from you we'll do it we would do it I would do it I don't know about porn but, but if you could change all your branding to your VPN instead it would be more thematically consistent with the show you know <laughs> well um, and i think it's nordvpn yeah. that i've heard um uh, oh my god gavin where'd you go where did gavin what? go who porn is there a... what are you doing here hmm. <laughs> um i think i've heard that nordvpn actually their service is not as like good and full and their servers aren't as quick and you know like it's not as good a product as some of its competitors um because they take all the money that they make and pump it into marketing. Uh, I think it's, it's a shame because the marketing, the marketing got me as well. I, I paid £100 or something for three years NordVPN at 70% off. Mm. Um, it's okay, but like, like the final bit in that skit is, um, your VPN, it breaks a lot of your other software, but hey, at least we paid PewDiePie a lot of money, which was mm. a joke that you suggested. The, it breaks a lot of your other software, is from personal experience. My emails won't sync when I'm on the VPN. I suspect that Microsoft knows the IP addresses, like has an ongoing blacklist for VPN IP addresses. Oh. Um, hmm. My Twitch chat will continually reload, so I'll miss messages. And yeah, there's just a whole load of problems that I have with it. That, um... And meanwhile... So I rarely... I use it by default, but I quite often just turn it off when I actually need to do things. What is it that I use for a VPN? I only turn on TorGuard. I don't know if that's just the name of their so software or whatnot. But this thing, I just Tor turn it on the, and it uh, works. Tor is that dark web thing. <laughs> and TorGuard too. Like they, they had no. Um, I, I when I was shopping for for uh, for VPNs, you know, I was looking at. I was seeing a lot of them saying, if you're going to use torrenting, if you're going to do that, or this, that, the other thing, please connect to these servers here, and the, you know, and we won't mm -hmm. actually allow you to make connections through that, so it won't work. Um, there was none of that in their literature. I don't know if they have specific servers where they want you to connect or something. You know, if I am, I go somewhere, you know, off the beaten path in terms of servers that I connect to for the VPN when I'm doing, you know, something that I don't want people to know about. <laughs> um... <laughs> But, uh, yeah, they were just strong and, and didn't tell me what I couldn't do, you know, when I'm paying them to be able to do this. Yeah. And, and I, I, yeah. I much prefer that because it's like, I don't want the people who I'm buying a VPN from acting like the reason why I'm buying a VPN doesn't have to do with torrenting and stuff like that. Like, I want you to stand up and be like, we know why you're getting this and you shouldn't be ashamed. Here you go. As opposed to a bunch of like plastered marketing and stuff that's trying to make it look like we're just here to make sure that mom's kids are safe at the supermarket because of the cell phone and there could be a hacker in the other aisle. No, I need to be safe from my ISP 
because uh, I need to be safe from Rockstar Games because they're sitting uh-huh. in the torrent fields watching to see who's downloading GTA 5 or not and then uh, DMCAing your I- your IP address and shit, uh, circumventing I got, you know, um, legislation. I got in trouble with my dad a few years ago. Um, by the way, if you're anti-piracy, uh, we have a show all about that. So if you missed it previously, uh, just have a Google for Harv and <laughs> Porn Piracy and you should find our thoughts on the matter. Um, yeah, I was downloading a film, I think. I just torrented some film and uh, my dad comes into the room a few days later. Have you been on illegal websites? Because I got a really angry, threatening email from our ISP saying that if you do it again, they're going to block our internet connection. So, yep. wow. Yep. Yeah. And that's like, so, there's... Mm. That is a whole nother show, but I just want to say, like, did anyone in any country elect the internet service providers to become the police of the internet? Because we didn't over here. The government here. did. You know, um, um, our government did. Well, if our government did in America, FCC, um, the FCC is no longer controlled by the American people. Uh, it's been overthrown by Agit Pai and, and Verizon, AT&T, and Comcast, and that is a measurable mm. fact at this point. So even if we had said, yes, okay, first we said no, and then people who wanted it another way to... That's a whole nother show. See? Mm. Mm-hmm. We, need, we don't need and topics. we got topics falling out of the sky. Yes, and we have so many topics that we have trouble sometimes deciding which ones people want to hear about. So if you'd like the opportunity to have your say and to vote on which topics you would like to see, well, we just ran a poll at the start of this stream and we've got some results. The main things which apparently you guys would be willing to support us for in order to get are voting on discussion topics for upcoming shows and getting on-screen recognition. Thanks for supporting us. Credits in the videos. And so, I think this might be a good time to give a bit of a shout out. Thank you to our top chat uh, supporter, what do you call it on Twitch? Bit donator, cheerer? Top cheerer? Yeah, top cheerer. Uh, Random aim. Aim. Thank you very much for those 500 bits. Thank you very much. And to our patrons, uh, his names I have not learned off by heart. We got Noah Craw, right? We got Noah. Uh, is yeah, Rex supporting? Did Rex right. sign up? Rex Gates? I think Rex did, yeah. yeah okay. Let me find a Let me list of yeah. patrons. You, you find the list. This is this a thing that Patreon needs to, like, figure out with having a nice API, too, because what we want to do is have an outro card that, uh, you know, gives you guys credit where credit's due for uh, throwing us some money, but uh, Patreon has not made it easy to access that kind of thing programmatically. Apparently they value your privacy or something. They haven't even made it easy to just access via the goddamn webpage. <laughs> I just want to see a list of the people who give me money each month. Why is that so hard? <laughs> I am not in that list. I actually wonder if it's easier to uh, go to our email box and say... It might be. Railway Hacker, Rex Skates, Noah, and I just want to make sure I'm okay to read whatever name has been used. Well... Edward. Thank you, Edward, hmm. for supporting us. Thank you all us. very much. Uh, in Porn's case, he lives off of the income. Uh, in my case, I have a full-time uh, coding job, don't tell them but that. I don't get paid very much. And to be honest, we're out here slaving away working on these videos. It's good to value ourselves a little bit. And anything that you support us with, we try our best to kind of give you what you deserve Plus, for that support. Plus, your as income from the job has been kind of undermined lately by me borrowing from you so much, right? <laughs> so, you know, if you if you don't want Harv to starve because he's trying to feed me, then support us both. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks yes, for showing up for so... this one, you guys. Virtual reality. Jesus. Hologram1 for... says, if you're interested, Harv is taking money the poor needs without needing it himself. I put work into this goddamn show. Have you been doing Do I that? Deserve the sweat from my brow? <laughs> yeah. No, um, it's a socialist utopia, which means that if you're poor, you get all the money. I am poorer 
than you, I get a lot of money. <laughs> you you deserve more, yes. Um, that but, is exactly what socialism Yeah, so for about. those reasons, uh, any, any amount you decide to support us with, uh, we treat everyone equally. We've got one tier, and that is the tier of love. And we want to give you all those kind of exclusive benefits behind the scenes, behind... Um, what else is there to be behind of other than the scenes? Documents, scripts, parts of the show Underwear. that don't quite make it to the show, and now, upcoming, the ability to vote on uh, discussions. And if there are things that you would rather have, and you decide that you want to support us, but there's something that we could give you that we're not giving you, let us know, and we'll we'll consider it. We're here to make good content, so... Thank you for the Cheer Wonderful Mosaic ticket. Task Force. 100 bits. Harv spent his yeah. Patreon cut on Cluster Truck, and it is true. I was true, there. I, I was there, and I'm so enjoying watching Harvey play Cluster Truck on twitch.tv slash HOC Gaming whenever Harv streams. Promoting me now. Um, yeah. But yeah, I uh, I got to be there when he downloaded it and installed I was watching just, you know, while he was doing some art. And um, he downloaded it and installed, and me, Speedrunner Daddy Pong, just watched... Watch little Harvey run in, and it was so, made me feel so good. I was actually a little bit, like, worried for you and whether or not, like, you were going to hate the game. But uh, you started playing, and I'm like, uh, you know, the game pops up after you've got enough points to, like, buy abilities so that you make the game a little bit easier by being able to float or slow time or something like that. <laughs> and uh, he just sort of clicked past it, and I'm like, Harvey, you know, about now is when you should be able to buy the abilities. He's like, what do you think, I'm a chump? I'm going to play no ability <laughs> just like you do, Pawn. Like, yeah. But I'm also, not going to live in your uh -oh. shadow. I'm in this <laughs> to win it. I'm going to compete. I feel like some of your speedrunning efforts have diffused very slightly. I've really got the jump timing down. I played a little bit just um, not today, earlier yesterday uh, without streaming. I was just replaying some of the other levels that I've okay. already completed. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm not going to leave content out. Um, <laughs> Yeah, I've, I've realized there's like that that kind of sweet spot timing where you run as much as you can and then just wait and then jump and you... And, um, yeah, the lower you get, the more fun. kick you get out of it. And it's really hard yeah. to like mm -hmm, to hit that bottom spot without hitting the ground too. <laughs> I think the reason I've taken to it... I mean, I, I'm not going to toot my own horn and say that I'm a god natural born speedrunner, but it's very similar to the Mirror's Edge um, wall kick where you have to go onto a wall, kick, wait, then jump, and you hit that one invisible frame where you can just jump off again. It's like the same bug, basically, same mechanic. Mm. So uh, I feel like it's very familiar to me already. Yeah, I would love but to yeah. see you on the leaderboards. Just want to have some competition <laughs> on the Cluster Truck leaderboards? Maybe. Maybe. I mean, maybe. I mean, it's really, it's not, I was going to say therapeutic. It's kind of. It's very frustrating at times, but it is just so, like, you get into it and you really want to. It's the same appeal, very similar appeal, to Beat Saber. Oh, yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for watching this uh, <laughs> live stream where we brought it around VR and back to VR occasionally and had a nice long discussion about, is VR dead? No, it is not. There were the reasons why. We hope you enjoyed. I think that is about all the time we have for today, so is there anything you'd like to close out with, Porn? Any final thoughts on life? I pooped myself. Have Porn, have Porn, have and Porn, and 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 have and Porn. Oven born. And we are clear. Good job, I guess. I wasn't really watching.